Hello creatives, Larn Elizabeth here with Larn Elizabeth Animal Art and today's video is the first of its kind on my channel. A mini course today covering everything I've come to learn in the last year where I've been really serious about printing from home and selling my prints online. All of which I've included in a print from home starter kit download that I have linked down below. I'll be sharing my seven step process for printing vibrant prints from home. I'll also be sharing four truths that I don't hear other artists talking about, realities that are encouraging, that will give you hope that this process isn't as scary as you think. I also include what you can do if you don't have the time, you don't have the know-how to learn Photoshop. I have a super helpful, affordable alternative and tips for that. And then lastly, I'll share the tools, supplies, that I recommend and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by how affordable this really is and that you may be able to get started sooner than you thought. And I will say October, November, December are like the winning months guys for selling prints. So it's my hope that I can help you finally achieve this goal of printing and selling your own prints from home, having full control over the process. And speaking of the fall season, this super fun holiday season that's creeping up on us I am opening tomorrow my original animal artist course and monthly challenge, and I have a super fun Inktober, October artist challenge planned. Only those on the waiting list, which is linked down below along with all the details to this course, get my early bird rates. Now let's get started. Your art prints will never be a perfect match. You may think that you can get it exactly identical, a thousand percent to the original piece. I used to think that, and I just would perfect it and perfect it and obsess over it. You can get it pretty darn close, but it's never gonna be a hundred percent identical. So that means that you'll see things in that print that nobody else will. That because you're the artist and you work so hard to perfect that original, only you'll see those things, those what you think are flaws. And I learned this when I was um, getting some help learning Photoshop from my sister-in-law, who is a very gifted interior designer. So she's also very detail oriented. And all the little things, textures, imperfections that I was fixating on, she couldn't see. It proved to me that I need to chill out, that getting it pretty darn close is enough because it's never gonna be identical. Don't be fooled. A more expensive printer, a more expensive paper, inks, you name it, does not always equate to better quality. I went into this thinking that I needed to spend at least a thousand dollars on a good printer, but that just wasn't the case at all. I ended up spending about $350 total on my printer. Yes, keep in mind that you have to keep paying for inks, but even that is actually very affordable. I also thought that I had to spend tons of money on quality paper, but it turns out the paper I ended up going with, the semi-gloss paper by Epson, was equivalent in quality to the more expensive brands that I tried out. Now, in my personal opinion, something that is worth considering to cut down on the amount of time you spend on editing your prints, I recommend investing in a scanner. I use and love the Epson Perfection V600 scanner. Honestly love it. It gets super close to the color, which is so important to me. The texture, the crispness really, really matters which is definitely something to consider if you don't know Photoshop or you don't wanna use it for editing your prints. So keep an open mind to the slightly older versions of something and the less expensive versions. If you know 50 to 60% of the process, that's enough. You have all that you need to get started. I have learned that I don't need to know every step to start the first step. I did my best to acquire all that wisdom, that 50% at the beginning, and then I filled in those gaps by either asking for help or by looking on YouTube, asking Google. That's how I was able to just get from step one to step two to step three, all the way to where I am now selling my own prints. And that leads me to my seven step 
print from home process. Okay, so once that painting has dried or whatever artwork that you want to make into a print is ready, I do not varnish my paintings before I scan them to make them into a print. This avoids a slight glare, especially in like those darker colors that I don't have to then edit out. And you guessed it, step one is scanning your artwork or taking a photo. I have personally learned, I don't like to take photos of my artwork. I find that with a scanner, it is 7,000 times more convenient. Unlike when you're taking a photograph of your artwork, you don't have to get special lighting or wait until that perfect window of time that you have the ideal natural light. I can scan any time of day. I find that this scanner really gets super close, if you get a good one, to the original, more so than when I've tried to take a photograph of the artwork. Now the downsides to having a scanner is that you're limited to a certain size. If you have artwork that's much larger than the size of your scanner, you do have to go into Photoshop, and I think there's other apps you can use as well, and piece it back together. All right, so at a quick glance, I'm gonna show you what this looks like from my scanner to my computer. All right, so once I make sure that scanner is hooked up to my laptop, I open it up and I make sure that the artwork, every bit of it, is over top that glass window, facing down and as center as I can make it. Then I carefully close it and I turn the scanner on and then head on over to my laptop. And when I click open scanner, it does a scan, but this isn't the final scan. But this helps me see if I've gotten all the artwork on this scan. Now, did you know if you set it once at the beginning, you don't have to set it again. I only have to make two adjustments, the DPI, which I like really high at 720 DPI. And then just by clicking my mouse, I put a frame over the entire owl, the entire artwork, leaving it at a TIFF document that I wanna download it to. And then click, I hit the scan button, which you can't actually see at the moment on my screen. I let that load. And before you know it, we have our scanned artwork. All right, so can you guess step two? It's actually not editing. I don't recommend editing yet. I recommend you save your work online so you don't have 1,000 huge files on your laptop. Unless you wanna put that on a hard drive or something, not only does this simplify this so much and prevent so much clutter on your computer, you don't risk losing all your work, when you get a sale, all you simply have to do is download it from that file online and then make a print. I use Dropbox. I love Dropbox. I create a folder for each artwork and I'll put the scan in there. I'll put the final edits. I'll put the mock-up photos in that one folder for that artwork. And this just organizes everything so much and it's very efficient when I get those print sales. All right, so for step three, now it's time that we can edit. And you can edit with just Lightroom and or Photoshop like I do. So I'll show you what that looks like in Adobe Lightroom, which is very affordable, guys, very easy to use, user-friendly. And then I'll show you what that looks like in Photoshop. All right, so this is Adobe Lightroom. It's only $10 a month. And when you're creating art and art prints every month, it is definitely affordable. Now this lab is an older edit that I did, but first I go to file, then add photos, and I look for my scan of the toad and owl. Now look for that blue button, it's a good guide. I click review for input, and then add photo, and I can get started editing. So first I'm gonna show you the crop tool. It lights up white when you're clicked on it. And by clicking on those angles and lines, you're able to squeeze out that white that we don't want, cropping your beautiful artwork so nicely and straight. Now with my scanner, it picks up so beautifully the colors, the textures, but it sometimes can be a bit dark. So clicking on the tool right above the crop tool, the three lines with the dots, see how we can move these circles along the bars, the contrast, the exposure, the clarity, which I'll slightly increase, highlights, there's also saturation, vibrancy. There are many different ways that you can adjust the colors here. So that's why I put my artwork through Lightroom first, and then I export it to Photoshop. But you're not limited to just color and cropping. There's other tools as well. If you watch my mouse, it's gonna highlight the Band-Aid tool. We can adjust, heal, 
take out things that we don't want in our artwork. Do you see this little target looking circle around my mouse when I'm over top the artwork? On that sidebar, you can adjust the size of this circle. So it's small or much larger, depending on what you're trying to heal. And then it takes from another spot in your artwork that's very similar and it covers it up. Now, if you look on the right hand toolbar, next to the Band-Aid here is an eraser. You can also adjust the size of what you want to erase, big or small. You can make it a more subtle erase by adjusting the opacity. Now get this, this is super cool, I think, especially if you want to protect your original artwork. Once you're done with all your edits and you click File Export, then you can add a watermark that's your own signature or even a logo and it will even adjust where you place that watermark. See how I can move it up and down? I can change the size, I can make it faded more. And once you're all content with it, you hit the blue button export. Then for my non Photoshop users, you would then transfer it to your printer to be printed. And on your printer, most often, not all, but a lot of printers will have a built in border that you can add, or you can choose to have it borderless. Hi creatives, sorry to interrupt, but I want to talk about my original animal artist course and monthly challenge that I'll be opening up tomorrow. It's actually a course for those of all different mediums, not just acrylic paint. Any visual art medium, this is a class for you. If you wanna harness the ugly phase of life, if you're in one of those seasons now, this is actually the best time to create art. It was the past two years and I felt like I was in this deep dark hole that I couldn't climb out of. As I attempted to reduce stress and express myself Unlike what I used to do in past years when I battled addiction, depression, and anxiety, it was in that storm that I unintentionally surfaced my unique artist style and also developed a five phase, five step creativity system. So if you know the basics, the fundamental techniques for your medium, and you kind of feel stuck in your art right now, or you just are itching to surface your own artist style, I recommend you join the waiting list. If you join the waiting list, you'll get my early bird breaks. All right, guys, so a link to that class is down below. Now let's get back to it. Now, if you want to go from Lightroom to Photoshop like I do, I click File, then Edit in Photoshop. Now I hope, I hope, I hope you haven't gone crazy like this crazy owl right here by now. It's a lot less complicated than it looks. Don't worry about the layers. I'm gonna click File, then New. This is after I've uploaded our artwork from Lightroom. I'm gonna go in and make the print size I want, which is 11 by 14. Again, everything pretty much stays the same. The RGB color, I keep it to 600 resolution. I click Vertical, that's something I change if I'm editing a vertical print. But at the beginning, you only just need to know 10%. That's all you need to edit prints in a really professional way. All right, so I've clicked back to my artwork. I'm gonna click image, then image size to adjust the size and the resolution before we can then move that artwork over to the print that we'll be printing. I'll show you again, image, then image size, okay? I like to keep my resolution around 700, 720, which we actually have to readjust after Lightroom for some reason. And then I make the art print just slightly smaller than what I'll be printing because I create a border. I'm gonna set it to a width of 10 and automatically that height changes unless this button is unclicked. I make sure that's clicked. See how it adjusts the other measurement? I'm gonna click okay. I need to do one other thing before I move it over top our white paper. See how doable this is? It's not actually that complex. I'm gonna click the layer on the right hand side and click convert to smart object, okay? So now we're ready to pick up that artwork and move it over to our print paper document. I've clicked on it, I'm holding on to it. I move over to that tab and boom, I drop it. That's why we have two layers now. So by clicking Control T, that selects it. And as I'm holding down the shift button, I expand it so it stays in proportion. Now you see how this layer is not perfectly centered? Well, what I'm gonna do is click enter so that I can deselect it, but there's actually buttons that will center it perfectly for me. To get there, I first click the move button. It looks like two arrows that are overlapping. 
on the left hand toolbar. And by clicking that, you see it reveals these little symbols that centers it vertically and horizontally. I'm gonna click both those buttons with my mouse and I have it centered. Now you don't need to add borders to your art prints. I like them, but if you don't, you would just expand out your artwork all the way to the end so there's no white. For me personally, I just like to have enough white that I can sign it, either directly on the bottom or on the side. And the last and final step before I print is I click on the top layer, right click, and I click Merge Down so that this condenses everything to just one layer. So we're ready to print, and this is step four. I use and love the Epson XP 15,000. It creates Gicle quality prints using six Claria inks, and I love it that the size goes up to 13 inches by 19, and I can also print five by seven prints too. I love that it's very easy to see the status of the inks, how low or high it is. They're easy to put back in and take out. They're very affordable inks and they have exceeded my expectation on color. All right, so let me show you what this looks like on my Mac computer before I click print. Here we go, I'm gonna click file print. Now what's really important to get those colors right, you set it to Photoshop manages color. Otherwise the printer will take over the color and we don't want that. For the printer profile, I set it to my Epson S RGB. And because we're printing a vertical piece of artwork, I'm gonna set layout to vertical. I'm gonna make sure my Epson Expression 15,000 is selected. And then Print Settings. That's where I'll click to make sure that I have the right size, 11 by 14, and borderless, because I've already put in a border in Photoshop. Remember, look for that blue. I'll click blue. Then I wanna select the paper I'm using in media type, which is semi-gloss paper. With this printer, the Expression 15,000, you can print in high gloss, velvet paper, ultra premium luster, and gloss, and matte. There's a range of options. Because I'm working with a larger piece of paper, I like to print it from the rear tray. Again, this printer will print up to 13 by 19 inches. I don't want it to print two-sided, and I want the quality to be best. Now, before I click print, to save on waste, to save money and time, I buy my Epson printer in bulk, the larger size, and then I cut it to the right size using a very large, affordable paper cutter. And I use that all the time. That is a must have if you're printing from home. Now, what's really important is that you don't take it from the printer straight to the clear bag to package it. You wanna let it dry, like let that thing dry for a few minutes. I like to sign it and then I package it. And that leads me to step five. You not only want to sign it, but I highly recommend to like up the quality of your print is to include some kind of certificate of authenticity. It can be small, it can be large, it can be circular, it can be square, however you want to do this. I actually made mine, get this, I made mine using the business card format on Vistaprint on recycled paper, recycled matte paper. So what I've included on this certificate of authenticity includes the date that it was completed, the name of the original, the size, the medium, and I sign at the bottom with my signature. All right, so now for step six, it's time to package your print. This does not have to be expensive or overly complex, but it does have to be professional. Hi. What you doing? <laughs> so at a quick glance, I'm going to show you the eco-friendly supplies and materials I put in to my packaging for my art prints, which are very similar but slightly different to my commissions and my original paintings. So here we go. All right, so I do not roll my prints. I include a backboard to keep them flat. So I put that in a clear baggie, the print, the backboard, and behind that backboard is my mini certificate of authenticity. Now separate from that, but inside the recycled paper mailer, I include a handwritten card, art cards that I print myself. I'll always include some kind of freebie. I have art cards here or a mini print. 
or my scripture art cards. Then along with that, I'll include a flyer that I printed from Vistaprint on Recycled Mat and a discount code card that I print from home containing a QR code that I got for free online that they can scan and apply on my Etsy shop. And last but not least, step seven, it's time to ship. Now, originally I was selling my prints on my website through my website, but because I get so many orders for my courses and my traceables, I wanted to keep organized and also potentially get more foot traffic. So I moved it over to Etsy and I love it. There's so much negativity going on out there about Etsy, but I have had nothing but a great experience. I'm very hopeful for a positive future on Etsy. I also love their shipping labels. So there's actually two different types of labels that I get. One is through Etsy, through the Etsy website, and then the other is through stamps.com. When I wanna ship off my commissions or my original paintings, I will print labels from home using stamps.com. But when I'm shipping out my prints that I sell from my Etsy shop, I go through Etsy and get their very affordable labels. I still, however, make sure that through those different avenues of getting labels that I have the tracking number sent to my email and I can track it and I do keep track of it. I wanna be two steps ahead of the customer so that there's no surprises. Just to kind of give you an idea of shipping costs for an 11 by 14 commission after I've packaged it as fitted and securely as possible, I'm not trying to make it too heavy, it's almost $11. So it's pretty affordable. Ah, all right, creatives. I hope that this video was a breath of fresh air, just encouragement and motivation, showing you that you can do this, that this is possible. You can even use this holiday season as like a guinea pig run. You can test things out, not feel so much pressure to get it perfect this season but it'll prepare you so much for a really successful year next year. Guys, I wish you the best. Thanks for watching. Bye.